Hi, this is Dave Hodges of the Common Sense Show, and we're bringing you an emergency broadcast. We have critical updates on what appears to be the U.S. and Russia racing headlong towards war. Now, as many of you know who follow our column on thecommonsenseshow.com, uh, I reported through Paul Martin and others, as well as my sources, that Putin had issued an ultimatum earlier in the week for the U.S. to remove all NATO forces, their missile shields, and so forth from Eastern European nations or face being attacked. And then later that same day, the Russian embassy put out a tweet. The one that's in Washington, D.C., amazingly, put out a tweet, which basically was response to John Kerry's threat to have terrorists overrun Russian cities. And basically they said terrorism can go both ways. And in the tweet, as we have uh, uh, put the picture up on the uh, commonsenseshow.com, you had the missiles of the S-300s pointing at press secretary of Obama. I mean, there was no question what they meant. This was a declaration of war by tweet. So, Paul, we, we have seen the heightened escalations. In fact, Paul, I've got one more, and I want to know if you know about this. In that golden triangle between Japan, Guam, and Hawaii, the Russians haven't flown missions since right near and right after the Cold War. And I'm talking 1989, 1990, 1991. Now we're seeing Russians fly bombers that could be carrying nuclear bombs or the type that do in this golden triangle. Were you aware of that? Yeah, I, absolutely. Okay, I would imagine you're probably getting that information from the same source we're going to get into in just a moment, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, because I got that today from one of my sources, and he said, Dave, this is serious. He said, Russia is doing what they like to do in football, spread you out so you're one-on-one -on -one against everybody, and, and basically you can't defend everything. And he said, this is what Russia is up to. This was my source today, former two-star. Well, anyway, let's get down to it. Paul, you contacted me uh, yesterday, and then I had some of this information from one of my sources, but not – let's put it this way. I didn't have the full and complete picture that you gave me, and I took this to Steve Quayle today and repeated what you had told me verbatim, and he confirmed it. So let's talk about what it is that you told me that has Steve Quayle, myself, and others who know about this in such a tizzy. Well, in the Marine Corps vernacular, we're you know we're in the hurt locker right now. Yeah, um, we've got um, some. Uh, I mean, with Russia and world politics, with what's going on nationally, uh, my uh, uh, my East Coast source is very, very, very aware of the of the UN troops here. Um, he's very aware of what this administration is doing. Um, he basically voiced what you know you and I've been talking about for some time. Uh, he, he, he's 100 percent confirmed there's not going to be a um, uh, an election. I mean, if you look at the the craziness, the absolute insanity of this election with the uh, with with the <laughs> with the candidates we've got. Uh, with all the the spill out of all the uh, lewd comments from from Obama, uh, from uh, Hillary Clinton, from Bill Clinton, from uh, uh, Mr. Trump, um, you know, one of the things I always think of is that great quote from uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. You know, all politics are scripted. It's written, it's choreographed, and it's fed to the American public. And I'm paraphrasing, of course, but. I mean, it's been it's been that way for a century, but I I think this is a big head fake. This whole political deal, you've got to know that they knew of all these, you know, the comments from from Trump. I mean, the the comments from uh, uh, that are coming out on WikiLeaks for Hillary, and and I mean, it's just massive. It's I mean, I can't even post all of it, but I think. You know, this is a, it's, it's a magic act. Don't look over there, look over here. You know, how'd they get the elephant on the stage? Well, you were looking at the great looking blonde with the great legs and then poof, here comes the elephant. So, yeah, but Paul, uh, Paul, let me, let me frame what you're saying here. You're saying uh, that he said, she said, Hillary defends Bill the rapist and she uses extreme foul language far beyond what Bill 
what uh, Donald Trump has used and Donald Trump's uh, improprieties with language uh, directed towards women in a sexual innuendo situation has come public. And you're saying this is all one big distraction away from what you're about ready to reveal right here. Well, it it's – I mean – we're we're in i mean we're two minutes after midnight right now um the uh, uh with the massive amounts of u.n troops here from east coast to west coast uh for some of the listeners that may not have heard uh, i have gotten a, a call from uh, our good friend john moore a few months ago his daughter lives in seattle and uh, she was shopping for a puppy and she answered an ad in the local uh, Craigslist for a puppy and went over to meet the lady and see the puppy. And uh, she liked the puppy and she was asking the lady, well, what do you do? She says, I'm a UN peacekeeper. And so, I mean, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) did she ask her, what the hell are you doing here? No, she was, she was kind of stood back from it. But I mean, if you look at the amount of foreclosed homes in this country, over the you know since 2008 and uh, i mean seattle's not cheap dave and i mean the audience knows this too uh, i mean you've got you and peacekeepers living in you know middle class homes in seattle so you've got to consider that for coast to coast and border to border uh but uh you know the east coast says we're in a massive massive world of hurt uh, well let's get down to the specifics what, what are we talking about Uh, preparations for uh, multiple things. Uh, the uh, he said Chinese the the the, the Chinese are going to kick our butts, and that means the grid. And you know that we've talked about. So you're, you're talking least, about an EMP takedown or a cyber takedown of the grid? Which do you think it'll be? I don't, you know I don't know. I mean we've got the North Korean we've got two satellites now from North Korea flying over flying over us, but. Uh, a lot of the listeners may not have heard. I was at a birthday party a couple of years ago, and I'm not big on parties, but this guy wanted me to come to meet a gentleman. This guy was an IT tech, uh, worked for the U.S. Army, and uh, he was livid. He said all of the software in the grid is all Chinese. He said one keystroke and the whole grid goes down. Um, so they're they're very very concerned of that. Um, the the biological is not out of play, and you, you've got a you've got a FEMA source on that, and I've got a very good source on that. So there's a there's a lot of footballs, a lot of ping balls flying around right now. I mean, the, the, we're not going to see an election day. Okay, I, I, let, let, let's put the implications behind us just for a moment. We'll come back to the significance and implications, but I want to go to the European theater. And what really got my attention and what prompted me to contact my friend Steve Quayle as well as others. And I now have three confirmations on the table that what you told me is correct. So let's be very specific about what Russia is doing in Eastern Europe. Well, they've got the southern Ru- – the, the belly of Russia is the, – the missile shield there is massive. And – he can't he can't fight that conventionally the only thing he can do is nuke it and he doesn't have any other choice dave yeah okay so you're you're saying going back to what we said earlier in the week is that uh, nato either vacates eastern europe and take their missile shields down and with them or face nuclear annihilation and that that that's something that uh, i think we discussed what three days ago if i remember right but uh, let's talk about Estonia and Latvia. What's going on there? Well, uh, in Kaliningrad, he's already moved in short range or medium range uh, nuclear missiles right on the border of Poland. Uh, I mean, we're <laughs> we're in kind of like a World War One moment where you know one bullet the uh, shot the uh, Duke of Sarajevo or. Uh, uh, can't remember his exact yeah, our Archduke title. Francis Ferdinand, right in Sarajevo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, we're, we're one bullet. Somebody sneeze. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we've got all of these Russian flights going from Japan uh, in the Pacific down to Hawaii. Uh, I think there's 12 long-range bombers. Last I read before I went to work today, 
so, uh, I mean, somebody's just so, the wrong sneeze at the wrong time. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be ugly. But Putin, Putin has not threatened anybody. I mean, we've got we've got Hillary, the warmonger, and all the neocons wanting a war because we got to cover up an economic collapse at some point here pretty quick. Uh, but uh, my East Coast source doesn't think we're going to make it out of October. Yeah, and and I know a little bit about the East Coast source. I just want to say to the listening audience, it's extremely well placed, and that's as far as I can go with my comment. But this is not a mid level operative. This is an extremely well placed source, as is my best source. I like to call the Benghazi source because he put me four months ahead of the rest of the country with what he revealed at that time. And he's never been wrong since. And I know you have the same confidence in that source on the East Coast as I do in my Benghazi source. But um, what we had talked about earlier really got my attention, Paul, when you said that Putin had moved the nukes into Estonia and Latvia. And you're saying now they're right up next to the Polish border. Well, that's a provocative act of war. And listen, I know a little bit about the Polish character. You know, it's almost like you can kill me, but I don't back down from anybody. That That's kind of their national mentality, but it certainly does fit their military. In fact, you know, when the Nazis invaded them, you had tanks versus troops on horseback that were represented by the Polish, and they attacked the tanks on horseback. These people have no fear. I, I'm waiting for Poland to make a move. Well, I mean, there's so many things rolling around right now. My, The most important thing, about two years ago, my East Coast source said, wherever you go, take a bug out bag with you because you may not get home. Right, I remember that. Uh, yeah, the last, uh, oh, about eight or nine months ago, he said, if you get any further from home then you can walk he said make sure you got all your gear with you because you may not get back today he said if you get a block away from home he said you better have your gear with you because you may not get home and that goes back to uh you know john moore source um out of florida out of uh, special operations command and one of my sources here is they're planning on Basically, what they're planning on is an economic collapse, and they're planning on ringing off the cities. Uh, that may get that may get backed up a little bit if we get some nuclear strikes on the East Coast and the West Coast in Florida. Interesting. I when you say if you get a block away from home, you better have your bug out material with you. Are, are you talking about the imposition of martial law and the inability to get home because the routes will be blocked? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I thought you meant. You know, that that is really, really concerning to me. And the country is sleeping. Well, Paul, I've got a bombshell for you that crossed my desk. Uh, we went to see an absolutely mindless comedy tonight with the family and had a great time. And uh, I'm not home ten minutes, and uh, I, I get contacted in the manner I do. It's not your typical phone conversation. And it was from one of my sources, and he told me that the Chinese on these artificial islands in the South China Sea, have gone on high alert. Well, I, you know, I got a call from uh, my good friend uh, out of Kansas. He's a very large landowner, uh, farm grower. Oh, I, know, grower. I know this person, correct? Absolutely. Okay, I know who you're and, talking about, right. Uh, and he's got some very interesting people that pheasant hunt on his property during the pheasant season. And... Um, They're definitely, 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 definitely worried about a nu nuclear strike, surgical strikes. Not, you know, it's not a, a big giant catastrophic boom. It's it's like a scalpel. It's like uh, uh, they're going to take out your spleen or they're going to fix your liver or whatever. Uh, these are small surg surgical nuclear strikes within the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. And um, I'll give you one more that crossed my desk yesterday. And it was when I was inquiring to my best source about uh, your um, detailing the Russians moving into Estonia and Latvia with tactical nuclear weapons. In Iraq, where we have reinserted military, and it's been sparse coverage in our military. I mean, I've heard inklings of this in our military, but it hasn't really gotten the attention 
it's deserved. And the reason why is because we're putting into Iraq offensive nuclear weapons, and we are also putting into Iraq a missile shield that we tried to disguise. And this is part of what got Putin going, is he discovered that and said, hey, they're going to attack us in Syria. That's when he turned around, and you remember this order that came down a few days ago? He told his troops, if you feel threatened, I don't care who it is, meaning us, that you can defend yourself and you don't have to wait to be fired upon. Do you recall that? Yep. And and so, you know, we're, there's just too many leaks coming from all over the place. And, and, Paul, you and I talk, and I get stuff from you, and I go confirm it with someone else. And then another person who has their ear to the ground is calling me and saying, Dave, you're not going to believe what I heard, and it parallels exactly what you and I just talked about. Uh, this is very frightening times. You're right. This is uh, pre-World War One. The forces have been put into play, and the people who listen to the Common Sense Show or read RevolutionRadio.com I have been sending as troop movements now for months, and it seems to be random. No, they're preparing to go to war. This is called mobilization, and we are mobilizing to go to war. The Russians have mobilized to go to war. The Chinese are on high alert. And, I, and Paul, I, here's what I find very disturbing, and this is what I told my source, and he said my instincts were good that I find it interesting the Chinese go on high alert on these military islands they've constructed artificially that serve the place of aircraft carriers in sea combat because they only have one aircraft carrier to their name. So this is why they constructed the islands in anticipation of fighting in the South China Sea. And I said, isn't it interesting that the Chinese are doing this at the same exact time that Russia is becoming more offensive towards NATO and the United States? And I was told, Dave, that's no accident. This is a coordinated effort. And when war breaks out between Russia and the U.S., war will also break out between China and the U.S. They'll be fighting in the South China Sea. North Korea will attack South Korea, and China will immediately move on Taiwan. That's what I was told tonight at about 7.30. Well, I mean, all, all the dominoes are there. Uh, you know, for the listeners... Um, Make sure you've got plenty of food, plenty of medicines. Take care of the elderly, people that have um, uh, absolute pharmaceuticals. They have to have to stay alive, food, water, and everything else. Because when any, a, a small, a one kiloton, a small nuke hits Long Beach or San Diego or wherever, everything's going to just shut down, Dave. The country crashed. will be paralyzed. I agree. There will be no just-in-time deliveries. The grocery shelves will be empty by that afternoon. Uh, the supplies, everything that you would need, say, like for a hurricane, all those kind of emergency supplies will be wiped out on the first day. No question. And there'll be looting. And there'll be house-to-house -house thievery and violence. And, and, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, but the continuity of government program for situations like this don't call for federal intervention. It calls for federal containment, where the people will be left to fight it out amongst themselves, but will not be allowed to leave their city. Yeah, I've got that. I mean, John Moore's source, uh, and I've got my source, a retired, high-ranking military officer, I'll put it that way. And uh, uh, they're planning on a, a six-month siege on the cities. Nobody in, nobody out. You know, I've had that for a year. Um uh, you know, the military plans and plans and plans, and, and, and then they execute. So all of these things are in play. Uh, the one thing that's really got me, uh, as well as you and your FEMA source, is the biological weapons out there. What I was and, told uh, about that, yeah, is, is this is the weapon of last resort. And what I was told by my FEMA friend when he and his family bugged out almost four years ago that, they will use biological weapons against us if they can't get the country the way they want it. Now, Donald Trump appears to have been delivered a knockout punch with these uh, scandals. And then you go to InfoWars or you go to Steve Quayle's site, and you're seeing that America's fighting back. That Americans are saying, hey, this isn't good. Trump shouldn't have said these things, even though it was 11 years ago. But Hillary's done far worse. Bill Clinton's done far worse. And now we're beginning to see a campaign mounted against these two for their sexual improprieties and their foul language in public. And and so when we look at these kind of situations, Paul, I don't know that Trump's campaign is going to get derailed. 
I mean, right now, in my home state, McCain, Sheriff Babu, who's running for Congress, and the governor of Arizona, actually, quite frankly, the worst governor we've had since I've lived here for the last 30 years, Governor Ducey, they've withdrawn their support for Trump. My feeling is, so what? Didn't we see this six months ago, Paul, in the Republican primary where the world was against Donald Trump? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. uh, the I was checking while I was at work. I was checking my phone. His poll numbers are still good. They're still up. Yeah. And 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 uh, you know, my East Coast source said what you and I know and what your audience knows is there's no way they're going to let Trump in the White House. Exactly. In this, in this, in, you know, in this lewd language, which happens everywhere. I mean, even, even the uh, uh, current president has. The videos are out on him talking about uh, uh, ribs and the uh, P word. Yeah, yeah, B- bathhouse Barry. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so. Uh, but I mean, for the listeners out there, get your food, get your pharmaceuticals, get everything you need. If you've got some place to bug out to, uh, some families out in the country, get out of the cities uh, because I mean, for for two years I've had. Uh, two military sources, uh, one a high-ranking uh, mil- uh, naval officer and a uh, uh, another military intelligence person, I won't say who, telling their family members this is going to be really quick, it's going to be really bad. That's what I get to. Like a thief in the night is the way it's been described to me. Well, Paul, oh, I, just, I, I just want to put a summary on what we had just said about Trump. Um This is a knockout blow for Trump. At least that's what the other side thought. And it doesn't appear that that's going to be the case. First of all, if I were Trump, I'd I'd replace Pence for his uh, lack of support for Trump. But secondly, aside from that, I think Trump is going to rebound from this because Trump has been on his own all the time anyway. He didn't have the support of the Republicans, the Republican Party. The Democrats were on him. The media was on him. This is nothing new. And the people who are going to support Trump aren't going to jump ship because they know how bad Hillary Clinton is. And I agree with you, Paul. We are in complete harmony that the other side, just like my FEMA source said, the other side is not going to allow this populist movement into the White House. And I was told, as you were told, that the final option, if they can't derail this populist movement, they can't make the country the way they want it, is they're going to put biological agents out into the field. They're going to drop them right on us. God help me for saying that. That's exactly what I was told. And by the way, my FEMA source, Paul, his specialty was counter bioterrorism. So he knows of what he speaks. Oh, I mean, there's there's no telling what kind of weapons they've got out there as far as bio is concerned. But, uh, you know, I, I was talking to my favorite Marine Corps colonel seven or eight years ago. <laughs> I, his, uh, his first uh, field commander was Ollie North. He's, he's got a very interesting history. But I was telling him, I said, Colonel, I said, they're not afraid of our weapons. I, he said, why is that? I said, they can't fight a conventional war with them. We got them outnumbered, outmanned, and outgunned. But I said, there's two things they can do. I said, they can shut down the grid, or they can hit us with a bioweapon. Or both. And Yeah, or both. Or both, and, yeah. And, and, that's a, and that's a possibility. So, um well, we've, seen it, we've seen it in our predictive programming. The Last Ship, real popular series on TNT, got its start oh, over a pandemic that wiped out 80% of the planet. You've got the new series on, I believe it's ABC. Wish I watched more TV. No, I don't. But I, I think it, it's called Designated Survivor. And the entire government was wiped out. I mean, Cabinet, Supreme Court, uh, Congress, Senate, everybody wiped out except for one congressperson. And the director of HUD, who becomes the president, paid, played by Kiefer Sutherland, a, a.k.a. Jack Bauer from the former popular series 24. And you, you've got this. And then the series Revolution that was abruptly canceled. It was based on an EMP simulated takedown of the grid. It wasn't exactly an EMP, but it, it took the place of an EMP the way they used this technology. And they canceled the series at the height of its popularity. And they canceled it within two weeks. You know why? Because they talked about FEMA camps and bioagents. Well, I remember when you were on uh, my good friend Randy Arbor's show here at 1360 AM in Colorado, and uh, you had a source that you were talking to a female, and her husband was in the uh, intelligence business, and <laughs> you asked her, well, can you tell us what's going to happen? She goes, well, no, I really can't because 
that would jeopardize my husband's position. And then you paused and you said, or she said, watch the show Revolution. I'm 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 a hundred percent convinced they're going to take the grid down because it's it's so easy. Well, the show Revolution came out that very year that my Femasaurus bugged out in December of 2012. That was when the show aired. And and actually, uh, they both told me, if you want to know what's coming, Dave, watch Revolution. And then my friend added in, he said, Dave, but also we could see bioagents too. Well, Paul, I think this pretty well summarizes where we're at right now. The world's moving close to war. Things are very serious. There's no substitute for preparation, even if we're all wrong. And I can't believe all these sources from so many people that I talk with are wrong. But even if we're all wrong, the worst thing that happens if you store some food, if you get your water, your gold, your guns, your ammo, is that you get to eat your mistake and you're always going to be protected. And if there's another crisis coming down the pike, you'll be ready. Well, anyway, this broadcast is brought to you by Numana Foods. How coincidental. And I would encourage you, if you haven't started preparing or you haven't completed your preparations with food, go to numana.com forward slash Hodges. And there is an emergency shipping option if you feel the need that to get that food there quickly. Well, Paul, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to further updates as we both become aware of information. Keep me in the loop. We can always get together, put together an emergency impromptu broadcast, and this will go out in the morning. Hey, thanks, Dave. Everybody, yeah, you cut out there get for ready. Me. Okay, coming. my friend. All right, keep me in the loop. Let's stay in touch, and uh, we'll try to pass along the latest to our friends and neighbors and listening audience so they can best prepare. Thanks to all for listening. Paul, thank you for joining me.